Among the best dogs, the pit bull was known for its attack power. This is the fifth part of the audiobook. The Competition Dog Chapter 5 Interview with McNasty and Mr. T. Of Roadblock Originally published in the American Game Dog Times, February 1992. This interview was given by telephone in February 1992. We asked McNasty and Mr. T how they came to be involved. First with the American Fighting Dog, and McNasty replied, me and my brother. We've had dogs all our lives. We skipped school and took our German Shepherd to get dogs from all over the world to fight with him. The person who introduced us to bulldogs was a guy named Speed, from the California. At that time, we had a husky that was really tough, and one day, this fellow Speed came up to us in a Lincoln Continental. He said to us, I heard that. You have a very bad dog, and he asked us if we wanted to put him to fight with the dog he had in the back seat, and how much we wanted to bet. We almost. We couldn't see the dog in the back of the car, it was so small, and I told him. I said, you don't want to bet any money since he's so small. Anyway, long story short, he brought the little dog out of the car and released it, he jumped on top of our husky and made him piss and shit all over the place, and made him hide inside his little house. We couldn't understand what the hell. That was it. The guy had to get some sticks to separate the two dogs, he told us. What kind of dog it was, and that's how we were introduced to the breed. We bought that same dog, his name was Rusty. We don't know of. What lineage he was, only he was a bulldog, more bulldog than anyone. We'd seen it, anyway. McNasty and his brother both laughed. McNasty continued, as a person who helped us get into the game, I would have to quote. Speed, and I also have to give Don Lee a lot of credit. Mr. T added, we've learned a lot ourselves, I'd say we should. Much credit to the headbutts. The first good dog we got was Bo. World had a little ignorance about our name. McNasty is just mine. Personal name. People thought we were the McNasty boys and sent. Competition reports for this name. Bo was from T and mine so his championship. Should read Roadblock CH. Bo, instead of McNasty's. Bo was the first fast line dog we owned, in fact I would trade. All we have now is to get Bo back. He was the best we ever had. When we asked what style of fighter Bo, McNasty, and Mr. T. Both. Replied, a murderer. McNasty continued, once, after we started raising dogs, I left town and we kind of went out of business for two years. One day I saw some guys. Doing something in the backyard so I asked if I could have a look and they told me. They said, no. I said, why not? Then they told me, why don't you know? Nothing about it. So I told them, I'm going to buy myself a dog that will. And yours. I skimmed through my dog magazines, I remembered a guy from. Mississippi, Randy Harris, who had a dog, Hershey Bar, or Hoghead. As if. Showed, there was a lady selling a 19 or 20 month old puppy that she had bought from him. She had raised the dog with a Rottweiler. When I got him Bo was a big fat ball of lard. On the weekend. Next there was a big dog show in Flint, Michigan, and Gary. Hammonds was the judge. I took Bo there. All those dogs were biting and they were trying to get him and he was there. Standing still, wagging his tail. He was the most quoted, 
he was a beautiful dog colored. Chocolate with a white face, but he was a fat pig. I asked Gary. Hammonds, after the show, why my dog was not classified and he told me. That it was because he was too fat and lacked the natural bulldog aggression, these. Were his exact words. Well, his aggression landed him on the cover of Sporting Dog. Journal. Mr. T continued from this point. We were ready to go to another show. Some guy had a dog he thought was pretty tough. We had. Turned Bo into lean meat and we had planned to put him with this dog. When we faced them, the other dog was snarling and looking crazy, this. Really scored Bo. Suddenly he went up and broke the shoulder of that. Puppy. So I said, well, here we go. McNasty tells us that, in all, Bo has had four contract fights and three fights. He. Won his first match in 1 hour 37 minutes, the second in 28 minutes, the third in 27 minutes. And his last match, against Abraham's King David in 1 hour 23 minutes. We used to bet which leg Bo would break first. T was on one side of the ring, and I was on the opposite side, so Bo attacked facing me. I said, the right, and T would point and say, that one. We never understood until the match with King. David that we both pointed the same leg, Bo would break his leg and both. We kept saying that's the leg I said he would break, and we were like. Arguing about who won the bet. I talk about the Escola das Cabicadas, we challenged Bo to his first fight with. 43, then 42, then the last two times with 38. Come to think of it, if we knew what we know now, we could have. Challenged with 36. Like I said, Bo was the best dog we ever had. He ran away one day and jumped in. Someone's dog, the guy shot and killed him. We have his daughter and she is. Producing some of the bravest dogs we've ever seen. We ask them what characteristics they look for in a fighting dog. Mr. T replied, the first thing I look at is the parents, I like to know something about the father and mother. I don't want a dog whose father lost in ten minutes and the mother lost. In five, I have much more tolerance raising a dog if his parents are good. Do you know what I'm saying? Like this puppy I have, son of. Joey and Tater, I look at him like he's a piece of gold. McNasty replied, Ed, you must know what I look for in a fighting dog. When I call you, what's the first thing I always ask? The first thing? You ask, how is the bite? That's right. I'll tell you right now, I want to know the way that darn. Can bite, excuse my language, I want to know if he can chew. Afterwards, we asked if there was any specific style they preferred in a dog more than the others. McNasty's response was, I like mouth. I don't. I don't care what they bite, as long as they're biting hard. Mr. T replied, I like a chest and throat dog, a dog that bites. Hard in the chest and throat, that's it, I don't want any dogs to stay. Sucking the chest with a skin bite, I want one that goes deep in the chest. Detonating. We tend to disagree about our preferences, McNasty continues, I'd bet. On a talented head dog versus a good one in the mouth. With a good dog. Head, I'm ready to win the world. My dog 50 50ths made me believe in. Good dogs in the head. I can also tell you, I need to give credit to someone who helped me and T. For many years, the so-so boys. Robbie and R.C. Deserve a lot of credit. I met. 
Robbie threw Greg, when he got married, he kind of broke up with the so-so boys and Robbie has since taken over. Over the years he helped me with many things, me. Provided many dogs and a lot of knowledge. R.C. Also, since he returned to. Active. We ask what they look for in a breeding dog or bitch. Brooder when they are trying to make a cross. McNasty replied, one that is producing a high percentage of fighting dogs that bite well. Let's say we have to choose between Buck and Magnum, to use an example of two dogs that are out there breeding right now, we would choose Magnum because he is producing dogs with more mouths. Buck is creating some good fighting dogs, but they are not showing the kind of mouths that we we want. We look for the same quality in a breeding bitch. Me and T do a lot. Planning, when we're looking for a bitch to breed, well she could be. A violent bitch of death fighting, but if she don't have what we're looking for. To continue our kennel, we will discard it. We can also tell you that we. We are Dutch boy fanatics, considering we had a dog that could. Break any leg any time, I mean, he broke snouts, smashed. Skulls, we've seen him bite dogs in the chest and their chests fall apart. Literally. That was Bo, and he was a Dutch boy pup. We have it. Tried to recreate ever since. After doing a lot of research on Dutch boy and how he was created, and with Dutch. Boy and Eli very close. We started dealing with dogs coming from Eli and Dutch Boy. Any we could acquire, and crossing them with the ones we had. Boudreaux's dogs come out with great fighting ability and thick bones. Pleasant, one negative thing about them is that they start out so young you are. Tempted to fight them before they are ready. Another thing is that they. Need to be selected hard. You will do more selection with Boudreaux dogs than any other lineage. They can trick you into thinking you have one. World ruler, you take the dog to the ring and he turns out to be a mutt of 20 or 30 minutes. You really must select. We do a lot of our selection through our instruction. We won't say how, but we educate our Dogs very different from most people. We had a son by Rebel CH. One of the toughest dogs on the bite that. You will never want to see. He really was a punisher, he would crush a dog and. Ripped it all apart at the same time. He was ravaging no matter what he did but. He wouldn't stop. He was born by the tail, on the one hand, he was the son of peaches, a daughter of Dutch girl. Us. We kept giving him more time, he was wrecking our business. When he. He was two and a half years old we traded him to Jerry King for a bitch daughter of that. Molly B. I believe Jerry ended up shooting him, and I shot the bitch he gave me. Sent, she was a stray. We asked what other strains they used, and what they liked or disliked. Disgusted about these lineages. We've done a lot of business with Doraline. Laminac and those Tonka dogs, she was a good lady and always treated us well. She. There were some good dogs, but we got back to where we were with the. Best we had. However, it was mainly our inexperience that. Made us lose with them their stubbornness working, and us not knowing how to do them. To work. I liked the material, produced a very durable dog and a very hard mouth one. At least, that's what we were getting. We were creating some. Satisfying magic man stuff, too, originating from that material. Crash slash cremator he had. We had several saloon dogs, they really did damage. Saloons Dogs. 
They were basically Eli slash Curvino's children. In my opinion, the best breeding with. The pub stuff was when crossed with Zebo's blood. When they did. That cross, they got a pretty decent dog, Tater was notable, and. So were Scooter and Twister. With saloon puppies, you get one of two types when you breed them, or. You get hard-biting mutts or you get people biters. I. I think Ken Allen made some pretty satisfying crosses of that Robert stuff. T, but you don't breed saloon dogs too close because they'll eat your ass. Tornado's brother Tex was a killer, he was a terrible people catcher. Oh. Ken Allen was a lot more nervous than I was to go in there with that son of a bitch. Man eater. We went to look at a female once, what was her name? Snapshot. She was the saloon's last great granddaughter, daughter of Butch by one of his daughters. She was a dog of a single person. When we went to buy her, her owner put her in a crate. Face. We sat there for an hour and tried to talk to her, and for an hour. Time she sat there and growled, so loud the whole crate was vibrating. Us. We ended up leaving her there. I'll tell you something, out of all the dogs I've seen, and I'm not being. Partial because the dog was ours, the best dog I ever saw was Bo. The best. Bitch I ever saw was Tater. She did things that would make him think she was human. This impressed me, she could understand any dog's style at the time. He was released and made contact. She loved working her throat, but she could do it all. I saw her literally rip a dog's nose off. The most competitive dog I ever saw in my life was King David. In ten minutes, the his right leg was broken. In twenty-three minutes, his left leg. It was broken. At thirty-seven he attacked over the wrists, and at forty-eight minutes, when he attacked, he scratched one wall and then the other until he caught. Bo again. This was the most competitive dog I've ever seen. The hardest biting dogs I've ever seen, I'll put it this way, I don't. I compare one against the other, but I will name five, Twister, a daughter of Tornado, Bo. Boss, Joey and. I can't remember number five, I know I'm forgetting. Someone, I know who number five would be, Mau Mau or Pepper. They were. Littermate's offspring of Oak Trees CH. Rocky II and some old mutt or. Some Colby bitch and they could really bite. They were two of the bitches that. They bit harder and the Queen of Hearts made mincemeat out of Pepper. I won't emphasize too much, but I will just say this, Pepper wasn't ready to. Evolve when she fought Queen of Hearts. She was being challenged every. Months and I know for a fact she had been paired several times over three months. Before the match with Queen of Hearts. Her owner said, give me the rest of the week. And twenty-one more days and we will go. We've seen her drill holes through a bitch's chest and lungs in six minutes, A. Eh? Turn, she was a bitch who punished the chest. Her sister was a brutal bitch in the. Leg, she cut legs, it looked like someone used one of those Jinsa knives. Queen of Hearts was a bitch that bit hard, but I'll tell you right now, we. We offer them Tater. She couldn't catch Tater. When Tater worked the. Head, she was not holding it, she was grinding it. What are some of the best matches you've ever seen? We asked. McNasty responded, one match I saw that I found really devastating was the. Martel vs. Radar, that was action from start to finish. I really enjoyed the match between Bronson and Half-Jaw Header, Mr. T told us. 
That was a real war. Tell us about C.H. Joey and C.H. Bossman. Well, Joey's story was pretty much told in the latest Times article. Boss. We got it as a young man from Paul McPherson, he told us the dog was. So good you could throw it off a plane, and so we did. What really? Bad thing was we took him to Flint and put him with a big dog. Fit for grip, the boss is only 48 pounds. Boss ripped off a piece. Thick bone from that dog's skull, the size of a 50. Cents. His first game, he beat the dog in 27 minutes, with just one. Bite. The second one was a really good dog, he was boss's toughest fight. We finally get to see the boss getting beaten up. When the boss recovered, he. It was in the dog's throat and that was all. The match between boss and shy boy is the one I liked the most, I've always given boss credit for. Be a strong dog, hard mouth, that day he showed himself to be a strong dog, mouth. Hard, and smart. He proved to be very smart in that fight. When he first bit the dog on the shoulder, the whole shoulder was bright red. He killed him, he broke the front of the dog's shoulder and his muzzle. Of the four dogs boss fought, not one dog survived. Are there any final statements you want to make? Some advice for the beginner. In the game? McNasty replied, take your chance, don't get ripped off by people who know nothing about these dogs. Go to someone who really knows dogs. My advice, Mr. T. Told, would be to find a breeder that is producing good dogs consistently. I suggest the person get a dog to start with. It, and increase as you progress. Don't buy more dogs than you. Do you know, when you realize you'll have wasted them all. Take one to grow. With him. Experience is the best teacher, but there are a lot of good people out there that can. Also help. Most of the top creators have helped me at some point or. Another, but I have to give special credit to LG. In Louisiana, and for the So So Boys. Through my conditioning program. McNasty added, I would like to say one more thing, we have a couple of young. Subjects who joined Roadblock, Little Charles and Big Rudy. We would like to give. A little credit, they really are trying. We would also like to give. Welcome Rick to Roadblock. Chapter 6 Interview with Sonny Johnson Originally published in the American Game Dog Times July-August 1992 A few months ago we got a call from a guy in Mississippi. Interested in a torpedo puppy, a son of a stompanato dog that we We have. He told us that his father-in-law was Sonny Johnson, the owner of Johnson's Rosie. A few months later, he, his wife, and Mr. Johnson came to us for us. See and choose a female puppy. It was very interesting to meet Mr. Johnson and speak with him, as we had been. Recently informed by the editor of the Times that someone on the West Coast, in the Behind the scenes of the dog game, a rumor had spread that there had never been any dog like our Johnson's Rosie, which Maurice Carver had invented and that she never really existed. Which, of course, would invalidate the pedigrees of three of our main dogs, as well as most of our other dogs and many other good dogs in the game right now. Mr. Johnson had brought with him all his bulldog papers for us. We see, old photos of Rosie and Brutus, pedigrees, letters and photographs of many. Famous dogs of the 30s and 40s, as well as a photo album and. Scrapbook belonging to the late Harry Turner and a set of paper cutters. 
ear with which Mr. Turner trimmed the ears of his famous 13-time champion. Battling Red. Mr. Johnson told us that he was born in Jackson, Mississippi, but moved to Texas in 74, and lived less than two miles from Maurice and Pat Carver. He is. Maurice became friends, and it was through Maurice that he acquired Rosie when Cub. A friend of Morris's had the litter of puppies, he told us, and Maurice told me. Drove there, chose a nice female and gave her to me, she would be bred to. Stompanato and he could take whatever he wanted from the litter. Rosie was a bad bitch, she was our house dog and a little baby with us, but. The house, yard, and our car all belonged to her. My wife was a little. Shaken, she had acquired her driver's license about a month before. And she had collided with the back of another car, no one was hurt. While the. Police officers were examining the car, she went into the house for a minute and left the back door open. Rosie flew out of the house and bit one of the officers on the arm. Right, he needed twenty-seven stitches. Rosie was bred twice with Stompanato, in the first litter there were four puppies. Two males, Buckwheat and Brutus, and two females, Beauty and Little Rose. At second litter there was only one pup, a male I kept and named Short. Stack. Maurice acquired buckwheat, he broke off the chain at fifteen months and killed a dog he was working for a match he was a bad dog. He won them too, and then they sold him to a mate who paired him on Atlanta for his third. Bobby Houston saw that match. I didn't even know that he had gone, or would have tried to be there. The match was $5,000 I believe with a thousand. Fine dollars. Buckwheat got sick, but they paired him anyway and he was killed, he was just very weak. Bobby Houston told me he was crawling on its belly and trying to get the other dog when it died. That's it. Competitiveness. Brutus didn't like to fight, and he was very cross-eyed. When he was fourteen months old. Me and Maurice got him into a fight and he just sat there in the ring on his thighs. Him with the other dog on his ass, looking around as if to say that. Hell is going on. Maurice said, he's a little young, bring him back in the. Another month. So I came back in a month and Maurice put a really bad dog. With him, that awakened Brutus. He took the top of that dog's head and. Killed it, the dog had a hole in its head the size of a quarter coin. Of dollar. The carvers bought Brutus from me and decided they would challenge him in. Oklahoma. When I heard about a third match, I said, Brutus match? he will probably jump out of the ring. And the people who had told me said, oh man, don't say that, we've got all our money on him. In. Anyway, for sure, the other dog, a winner of two fights going to the championship, started to go after Brutus, as I said, he had a squint, he must have seen approximately four dogs fighting him. That dog got him. By the back leg as he was going around the side of the wall, and Brutus dragged him up the wall with him. The dog made a mistake, grabbing Brutus and. Leaving furious. Within about three minutes he did have that dog. Bark so loud you could hear it a mile away. His owner was. Screaming, I won the fight. I won the fight and someone on the side, I don't remember. Of his name, said, these people drove all day to see a fight of. Dog, and they will see one. I'll bet you a thousand dollars that my dog will beat yours. Right here. 
Then, at about the same minute, his dog let out a great howl. Little Rose was bred back to Stampinato and then the carvers took her back. She was registered as Johnson's Little Rose, but appears in pedigrees, breads of Stampinato, as Tiny, which is what my brother called her. I really didn't know. More of her after the carvers took her, they had her and Brutus, both of them, in that time, and it looks like they renamed her Freckles, because that's how she appears in pedigrees originating from Iriltus. We have heard many different rumors about Stampinato, that he got cold, that he won two in Mexico, that he was put to fight or was challenged and gave up, having found someone who knew Maurice, and had seen the dog, we asked Mr. Johnson on Stampinate. He was a good, competitive dog, he told us. Maurice would never challenge him because he was blind in one eye, and he was the dog of Pat's pet, but Maurice took him to backyard fights many times. He had a hard mouth, and produced some very competitive game dogs. Stampinato was named after Morris's gangster friend, Johnny. Stampinato, he continued, Johnny Stampinato was connected with the game at Las Vegas or Hollywood. He was killed by Lana Turner's daughter. He then told us about Pat Carver, Pat was a nice lady, she went to every matches and maintained the pedigrees of the dogs. The rooms in Maurice and Pat's house. They were always spotless, but the living room was always a pigsty. They had a few visits one day, some breeder and his wife or girlfriend. Apparently the mess bothered her, she grabbed a kitchen broom and started sweeping. Maurice yelled at her, what the hell are you doing? She said she was just trying to help, sweeping a little, and he yelled back, it took me twenty years to make the place dirty like this and I don't want anyone making a fuss here. We went out into the backyard to show Mr. Johnson our dogs, and in the way out we asked him when, and how, he started in the dogs. I started on dogs when I was a kid, my dad had them when he was young, and had told me a lot about them. I got my first dog when I was approximately eleven years old. I paid ten dollars for it, which was a lot. Money in 1937. It was a rather solid female. The day I bought her mine. Bike got a flat tire, and I put the puppy in my coat and pushed my bike. All the way home. I loved that little dog, she was a small dog and weighed approximate. 28 pounds. I got my next dog with HP. Znicious, a breeder in. Magnolia, Mississippi, he had some nice dogs. I got a black dog and 10-month-old bronze, which weighed approximately 55 pounds. I've had it for about a month, so he ran off the chain one day and someone poisoned. I wrote again to Mr. Znicious and asked him if he had another dog, and he sent me a dog named Osaki Snapper. He was a red dog and big white, about 60 pounds, not an ounce of fat in the his body, he just didn't get fat. I used to walk him down the street and he didn't. Didn't fight anyone, he just pushed others and got on top of them. Harry Turner called my father one day, he said, I heard you have a bulldog from Long Tail there. I'd like to bring one of my dogs and try it out. My dad said, you'll have to ask my son, it's his dog. He came with that beautiful, solid, black dog that looked like it would tear mine apart. Pieces, you know. He showed me how to hold the dog, took off the leashes and so on. Successively, and then we released the dogs. 
His dog was winning all the time but I was watching and my dog was not hurt. Harry said, do you want to leave some more, and I said. Of course. After another five minutes he said, you better stop. So we did, my dog was still losing, but there was blood everywhere, and it was the blood of the his dog, Snapper ripped him all over underneath. He wrapped his dog in an old bag and I put Snapper back in the bag. Chain of it, he ran about fifteen laps around his house, drank water, and lay down as if he had just gone for a walk. Turner called me the day. Next, and he told me that his dog had died, and that I had a dog. Very good. We took him around the yard and showed him dogs that had Rosie's blood and stomponate somewhere in their pedigree, he liked Torpedo a lot and he said. Looked a lot like Stomponato, but surprised us a bit when he showed interest. In Little Bandit, he said he had a head like Stomponato, only smaller. Bandit's mother is a great-granddaughter of Stomponato and Rosie. He mentioned later that he would like to acquire a male bandit puppy in the future to breed with the little female daughter of Torpedo. We showed him an old dog we named Pete, a grandson of Struthers. GR.CH. Luther, and we explained that Luther was a grandson of Beauty, one of the dogs in Stompanato slash Rosie's first breeding. He looked confused at first, then interested, and finally exclaimed, I'm a convict, Maurice got me. Again. He explained that day Maurice came with an old Mexican man and said that the man wanted to buy beauty. He finally agreed to sell it for seventy-five. Five dollars, as Maurice told him, that was all the man had. After listening to what we told him, he realized that apparently Maurice had acquired the bitch for him and had sold her to a man named Carpenter in the north. He then said, well, I assume Maurice didn't deceive me because I always said to him that he could have anything from my backyard, but Maurice would probably had more fun that way. We conclude our visit because Mr. Johnson and his family had a long trip to Mississippi ahead. We were speechless when, before leaving, Mr. Johnson gave all those priceless relics of his from ancient times to us, and said he wanted us to have them and hoped we would share them with the Brotherhood of the Game Dog. In future issues, we will feature these photos, pedigrees and other valuables. History for Readers of the American Game Dog Times this was the fifth part of the audiobook. The Competition Dog. Sign up so you don't miss the sixth part. My name is Rodolfo Luis, I appreciate every comment, like and share. God bless you all. I went.